part of the simplest. Okay, criminal is the simplest coordinate to pass. However, what makes it hard is that uh, it is so much of a procedure. Okay, so what makes it a little bit complicated is that you need to follow the procedure. Okay, if you don't follow the procedure, it will be a little bit complicated. So under such circumstances, all the efforts should be on the procedure. At each and every step, you should be having a remit. Because at what I assure you, you're going in for orals, but they're looking for remedies. Okay? They're looking for remedies. That's why every question has proceed, proceed, proceed. And when it comes to criminal and civil, don't expect a question when you are outside court. Okay, don't expect a question when you are outside court. All questions are going to come when you are in court. You are either defending, you are either prosecuting, or you are giving judgment. Okay, that is it. Either an objection has been raised, you are responding. Okay, either. You have to object. So it will be a case to case basis. So when you are dealing with the criminal, before you go through the procedure, this is a time of uh, just understanding. Okay? There are things you should put into consideration when you are going in for orals. Okay? At this point, what is expected of you is to understand evidence only in a criminal. Evidence. How you tender in the evidence in court, how they object evidence, how they treat different types of witnesses, effect of death of a witness, all such things. So at this point, what we expect that you know evidence. Remember when they are making a call up. There's something when a person in Nitono was um talking about the so-called uh, Interpreter, he told you the presumption is you read this and you graduated at undergrads. And so that was his wording. That re echoes my statement that at LDC they, they teach applicability of. So, you, whatever you learn throughout these two terms, you're going to apply it from man. Okay. So, in criminal, you've seen the questions. Most of these questions are basically looking at a solution. And the solution is practical when you are in court. So don't take an opportunity to think when you are out. So if you don't know, when we are dealing with uh, these questions, okay? There are questions that require when you are outside court, okay? And trust me, you will be an officer. An office of police. That's the question you're going to do in a criminal when you are outside. Either you are going to recover evidence, they want you to take them through what we call the chain of evidence. Or not. When they want you to condone the crime scene, but the rest you're going to be in court because it is a procedure course unit. Okay? So, unlike the previous days, we've been starting from the very first one. But this time round, we are going to cut it. We are not going to go for arrest searches and everything. Okay? We can't start from there because those things are not asked in orals. <laughs> okay? But uh, the only thing that sometimes asked from the preliminaries is what we call, so I'm going to start from what we call the chain of evidence. That's where I want to start from today. Okay? From when it, it comes to what we've been doing, we say criminal rates around five words. Okay? Complainant, suspect, accused, and then convict, and then appealant. That is the entire criminal of first term, second term, 
and the third term. Okay, that is the entire set of premium. If you understand the way those words move, trust me, you can't fail to understand the four Okay, I've been explaining them always, okay, and often. So, when it comes to criminal, it is a, a procedure. We start with a complaint. First things first. Okay, thanks, Arafat. Unmute your microphone. What if they ask in Oros, Kans, what are the components of a police fight? Hmm? Mm. Kans, Omonge, Arafat, kindly unmute. What are the components of a police fight? Because that's the first thing you have to understand in Brimi. Hello, good evening. Yes. Can I be here? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Um, uh, a police file, I would say that a, a police file uh, contains uh, statements, for example, uh, the complainant statements, uh, mm, evidence in, for example, medical reports, uh, uh, reports of uh, experts, for example, the government analytical laboratory, something like that. The, the uh, statements of different witnesses. Yeah. Okay. So a police file is made up of what? A complainant is statements. Then two, the plain suspect is statement. Then three, the investigating officer's statement. Then four, the arresting officer's statement. And then statements of other witnesses. Okay? Okay? Yes? So the left side and right side. Yes, because it may be hard for you inside there to tell. Just give them a marathon. Where they die, they die. Okay? You, you know, just tell them that because sometimes they can, you can tell them, some people start with a cover That a cover page, I mean, I'm telling you what you see. Okay? Some they tell the cover page, then they tell you it's divided into two sides, the side of the accused and the side of the, the complainant. Not just the complainant statement followed by the arresting officer statement, then the I.O. And then you come, plain suspect statement, medical reports, and other witnesses. Okay? So now, when you are starting this, the gist of a police file when you are going in for orals starts with the investigating officer's statement. Why? In orals, they can easily tell you that uh, take us through the process of recovery of exhibits. Who does the recovery of exhibits? Is the investigating officer. So, Sometimes that question, they tell you one, recover of exhibits or chain of evidence. That's the same name. If mm -hmm. they can tell you answer, assume you are the investigating officer or you, they, or they can tell you, assume you are the OCCID Kabugube. As you, you are in your office, you receive a call that one of the students of the Law Development Center has been murdered along Kabugube LDC Road. Proceed. Okay, proceed. That's the question where you're going to be outside court. You are there. So what if you don't know? 
the duties of a police officer in conducting or collecting evidence. So that means you should put into consideration what we call the chain of evidence. The artist, you have received the phone call. What, what does that mean? You are the person who is going to go to the crime scene. So everything you meet at the crime scene should be protected. You know what? Once the crime scene is tampered with, that evidence is relevant, but in a So they want you to maintain the chain. So they want you to take them through what we call the chain of evidence or recovery of evidence. So that chain depends on the facts they have given you. An accident has occurred. Okay? When you're stopping to Seca, just opposite Paramount Hospital. You are the officer at the crime scene, you proceed. That's a different offense. So the chain of evidence depends on the different offenses. So when it comes to this one, what you do? If it is a murder scene, the first thing they don't tamper with, the fingerprints, okay? Any print in murder. So the first thing you do is say, I condone of the crime. The crime scene. Why? You don't want any other person to tamper with the crime scene. Okay? Then after that, I instruct the so-called scene of crime officer. They told you you are the OCCID. Well, because you, you are an expert in scene of crime. So you go with the scene of crime officer. Okay? Then you, yes, that proceed. Okay, <laughs> we said one, you condone the scene of crime, then two, you conduct the scene of crime officer, then you dress in an appropriate attire that does white suits. They told you to maintain white and black. So you can come in that white suit for the, the so called. <laughs> okay? The scene of crime, so you dress appropriately, then you enter the crime scene. You enter the crime scene, you examine the dead body, you examine the dead body, then you refer the dead body for what you call postmortem reports. Immediate. Okay, after all of that, now we put the things in the just one day. Once it exceeds one day, that evidence is inadmissible. It is very bad, but inadmissible. Okay? So now, you've sent the dead body for examination. Now you've, you have the, the crime scene. Then you start doing what you call interviewing of possible witnesses. That is not a problem. The one who was, was, was a monarchist. And he said, can you move? I'm like, Okay. So they're trying to explain what occurred. So once they take them to police to make statements and they don't come back, they don't understand that they're helping police to carry out investigations. They are possible witnesses. So the reason why they are being taken, it is in their best interest. And they start saying that the Ghana police is bad. Okay? So you get it. So now you start, so now you start, okay? Then, in case you find any exhibit, okay, at the scene of crime, in case you find any exhibit at the scene of crime, you wrap it, okay? Or uh, it's not wrap, what other name they use? You package it in what we call the exhibit bag, okay? You see those transparent umbrellas, eh? they lock it up, the exhibit bag. Then you 
you label, you don't mark, just label. Okay? Then after the scene of crime officer will make a report, what you call the scene of crime report. The scene of crime report. Then this report will be signed by all the parties around. Okay. What point is the execution? Okay. Then after you go back to police, you you tender in the exhibit, the exhibit store manager who will give it the exhibit number, and then they give you the exhibit receipt. Or sleep. Yes? You are from, from the crime scene, you go back to police, you keep the, the exhibit, but you don't keep it yourself. You give it to the exhibit store manager who will record it in the exhibit book. They give you the exhibit number and then they give you what we call exhibit sleep. The total certificate is money, the studio number. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> can you record serial numbers of money? Mm -hmm. eh? The moment the officers see money, they run back. They can't even think of writing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You go to police, you tell them, they give you the exhibits of Sipapa. They are there. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> okay? So now it depends the type of exhibit you have recovered. It may be perishable, okay? It may be a disallowed, allowable substance that is nicotic drugs. It may be a protected species, okay? So we have the what well, it depends on the type of exhibit. So immediately we have some exhibits we can't store. Okay, we can't store. That means you have to also appreciate what we call reservation. That's why it is called recovery and reservation. We have those we don't. So we have discovered, we recovered. Now discover is done. So now we want to preserve. If it is doesn't fall under those that I've mentioned, it can be kept peaceful. Okay in the exhibit store. But if it is a perishable, a desirable substance, money, money. They will probably take an exhibit store, okay? So what you do, you make an application to the nearby magistrate's court for disposal, okay? Money. For disposal. So what they do, money, you take pics of this money, okay? You make an application to the nearby magistrate court, they give you the appropriate mode of disposal. Okay? The appropriate mode of disposal. And this can be, okay, staring, for example, perishables. You saw what used to happen to Cassidy landing site. Okay? They used to, ah, the fish, yeah. Okay, you they can sell if not, they can by notes of motion. Okay, who applies as the BPP? You, the officer, the BP has not yet come in. Yes, the IO. Okay, sometimes they proceed or because in magistrate courts you are allowed to proceed or okay. So then, depending, so they can even ask you, give us four more. Okay, of dealing with exhibits. We have one sale. Okay, we have exhibits that we sell. Okay, then another one we have by use of photographs. That's how you will enter in an exam. They tell you can't. You are the prosecution. Okay, you are the prosecution. It is an offense of being found in possession of a protected. Species is an elephant. Bring it to court. Bring it to court. You are you get it. <laughs> okay. Look at the size of the elephant. How are you going to carry it to court? 
Okay? So what you do, you make an application for the I.O. Okay? Remember, this is a protected species. It's supposed to be protected. So you make an application. You, you take photographs. Okay? You use secondary evidence. You use photographs because it is a secondary of the, the primary. We are going to there. Okay. Now you get it. So then we have destruction. We have exhibits that should not be kept. Okay. And marijuana. You tell them you keep it in the exhibit. We are gonna keep my sister. My sister is in Mumbai. Okay, so they go for what we call destruction. If not, they can give you where it is uh, expired drugs. Okay, because you know what happens to national medical stores. Those are criminal offenses. Okay, but with strict liar, liabilities. You go for destruction. When they give you money, the mode of preserving money by use of photographs, but you photograph the serial number. Because store money is an offense also, because money should be in saturation. Okay? But I have a police station and so yeah. Exhibit so I had a million. Destruction as well. Okay? What they do, you just take a sample. A small sample, okay, and you go to the the to the laboratory. Then the rest you go for destruction, okay. <laughs> the money goes to the treasure for the for the country, okay. Yes. Okay, everything goes to the treasures. Okay, <laughs> now another thing on that very thing, they can ask you. There is a question of the point that you've come across it that uh, you are the IO in the face of corruption. Okay, you have 25 million shillings. Okay, but you have a problem of 10 million shillings. You want to use this money, but you are expecting to, to put it back. Proceed. Okay? Proceed. Remember, once you use that money, the serial numbers are going to And once you reduce that money, the denomination is going to So what do you do? You just make an application for disposal. Okay? By taking it. Okay, so you keep that money, then you notify code. Okay. How are you going to be with this? The money has to go to the treasury council. It goes to the district. What is it all? No. Which treasury? Where does police take money? Hey, they have accounts where they keep that money. As you see that for Elvis, those codes, eh? they have a code where they pay that money. Because police has no its own account. Yes. Now what happens, you see how you pay your institution here. The same way. They just boss, they generate that payment code. You deposit that money, it goes to the consolidated fund. But it says that it's coming from police. Okay? That's why it is hard to get money for bail. Because of that reason, we pay to the consolidated fund account. Okay? You ask the budget. You ask the budget. It's hard to get that money. Okay? So you get it. So now, what we see, they can give you facts where that chain of evidence is broken. Okay? So you should be keen 
on how the chain of evidence is broken. Because you saw these guys of criminal, they talked about evidence like nothing. Because they know what the question So you expect them to ask you what is arrest? How do we arrest? What is an offense? No. They think the easiest thing they are going to give you, making submissions and ruling and judging, honest. Those are the easiest, but the rest is going to be better. Yeah. Yes. Yes, they will tell you stop. So you start until you keep the tell you keep quiet. Okay. No, if they tell you stop, that means you have done substance. And they can, when they are still enjoying your submission, they can even let you go past five. Mm. They will give you what we call you will be defense counsel, I'm sure. You can't be the prosecution. They will give you that question in defense counsel. You know why? Tampering the scene of crime, admissibility of that evidence. Okay? So now, you have to know the circumstances under which the chain of evidence is broken. How? They can tell you, they tell you that uh, Rashid is the eye of who, who, during the investigations, Gotten out this and this. Okay? The day of giving evidence, I found a Jim Mohez, is the one who has come. Okay? To tender in. You, why? The general rule is whoever recovered the evidence is the one to tender it. So when someone else comes in, it is a, the chain is broken. So that means that evidence is. Inadmissible. Yes, it is really bad, but inadmissible. Okay. So when one takes evidence, yes. The day that the arresting officer arrived, went to the village, uh, went back to the village. Then they will take those questions are very common. After you objecting to the evidence, they will tell you, I'll show you the prosecution respond. Then you bring in what we call exceptions to the general of the best evidence rule, where a third party can tender in evidence mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. yes yes counsel we we'll say that a chain of evidence is the process you go through of chain evidence once the person is supposed to obtain that evidence is not around and stand by someone else the chain will be broken Evidence will be relevant, but not admissible. It will be violating section 59 of the Evidence Act because you have the best evidence rule. Okay? Section 59. Yes, section 59 of the Evidence Act. Once it is broken, a mere diversion like this. Okay? So now. Okay, yes, that's how it is. So, and now, what you should know. Okay, whenever you're going to court, you bring your exhibit slip, you present it to the exhibit to our money. They give you that exact evidence, then you go to court. Morning in progress. Yes. No one else should tender in that evidence with the exception of you. Okay. No one should tender in that evidence with the exception of you who recovered it. Yes. So now, another concept that is around that is yeah. You bring you, you go for exceptions. The rule. Where a deputy can do the work of a senior. You, in in Oros, this book, I remember they, they have told you 
don't even waste time. Okay? Your books. They, they have not told you. Don't waste much time on books at this time. Understanding and resting is the best key. Yeah. That's why I'm going to sleep for eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. Are we allowed to okay. So let, let's let's go on. So now, after that point, okay, because at that stage, they ask a lot of questions. They ask that of recovery of evidence and then how to effect a sexual run. Yeah. Then we have what we call effecting of a such warrant. Now it depends. I've told you the issue of recovery of evidence. Evidence is white. You guys have never read evidence, I'm telling you. Okay? You have to be able to tell how things are played in evidence. Okay? Then I want us to go for what we call because they can tell you about a search. A search warrant, then you cancel. Assume that I go and you receive the search warrant proceed. It is also still recover of evidence. How would you proceed under such circumstances? They want what we call execution of a search warrant. It is there in the MCA. Yes? I'm going to do it first. Okay. But there are there are areas where I'm trying to first put emphasis there eh? because they are so examinable and we have not taken time to read it to understand them in details but after i have the entire flow of agreements and i'll do it okay the entire flow in just 10 minutes okay. because the exhibit is going to change because it has to remain its own form okay then we have what we call execution of a search warrant okay Remember, where you have reasonable grounds to believe that uh, something relevant or connected to the case is kept within the house, okay, of the, the accused, okay, you have to obtain a such warrant. But how do you execute it? So that, but the same process, how we execute a such warrant is the same process we execute arrest warrant that's the technique they can tell you that you are the i of the arrest warrant has been issued against jennifer proceed okay 90, 99 of the police officers they don't execute the arrest warrant right once they find you they first just confide you because they know section two very well that arrest is by confinement that's when they that's what they do first then they explain later why they are confining you. Okay. But in prudence is required. Okay. Then let's go for what we call execution of a search warrant. When you look at the MCA, it has given you the procedure. Okay. How? One, upon obtaining a search warrant from court, magistrate. from the magistrate's court, it is an oral application okay you go as the officer you stand in front of the magistrate you inform him or her about your issues and they grant you the arrest warrant for a search warrant okay so when it comes to execution of a search warrant one after getting the search warrant you notify the officer in charge of the police station the oc okay then the OC will grant you leave to proceed, okay? You first notify the officer in charge of the police station who has to first grant you leave, okay? Once leave is granted, you proceed. You pro the officer. Okay, yes, you notify the officer in charge. Then you proceed to the area where you're going to search 
you proceed to the area you're going to search. You know, you first go to the magistrate, okay? Then you get the warrant. Then you come to police, notify the OC, and then you proceed to. Because remember, that search warrant indicates time and the place and the date and by who. So it should be executed by the person mentioned there at the time and the place. So after notifying, yes, where they are going. If you don't know, they don't grant it to you. But sometimes you have what you call open arrest warrant. You ask Marima, yes. Okay, that warrant. Once they give you an open warrant, you must still call a case that's what happened to my mother. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Okay, so when it comes to this, okay, once you reach the, the area, you start with chairperson, the LOC. You introduce yourself and the purpose of your, your visit. Yes, you first go to the area LOC. Okay. You introduce yourself and the the reason of your your visit, okay? Then, then after you proceed to the place where you're supposed to search. Yes, you introduce yourself sometimes. Yes, yeah, LC one. So it depends if you are not within that jurisdiction. If you are from a foreign police station, yeah, you first go. To the police station, then after the police station, you go to the chairperson LOC one. Okay. Then once you reach the place where you're going to search, you through the chairperson, you introduce yourself and explain the purpose of your your visit. To the person who sends them for going to search you. Okay? Because of which this place you want to search. You inform these guys the reason of your, your visit and who you are. Okay? Then once you inform them, the law is they are supposed to grant you what we call increase, a right to enter. Okay? They're supposed to grant you increase, the right to enter. Now, we may be in orals, they tell you, cancel. They have, not, they have denied you the right to enter. What do you do? Okay, you break and enter. Yes, you break and enter. Okay, English. E, E, N, G, R, E, W, S. Okay? You get it. Why? You saw what happened in Jeremiah's case? Okay? This guy is had a warrant. Okay? And that warrant gave them the right to enter. So where you go to the scene, and you are denied an opportunity to enter, break and enter. Okay. Then after entering, then you carry out the search, and then any exhibit you recover, you seal it. Okay. <laughs> okay. You get it. So once you enter, you recover any exhibit, store it, make the exhibit report, okay, and you get out. <laughs> now, what happens if they don't allow you to get out? You break and come out. Why? You have a right to express. Okay. <laughs> Yes, all the persons around. Sometimes they come with them, and then suddenly they don't come. So it's upon them. When you look at the case of, uh, no, we have, the, we have that of. Uh, Kifapa Siraje versus AG, the issue of Nakasero Mosque. Those guys had uh, a search warrant. So when they came in the mosque, 
they invaded the mosque, they entered in their shoes. And what they took, they took a box of crud and the boxes of offertories. I don't know whether. <laughs> Because they said they wanted to search the mosque. They entered the mosque, but what they took wasn't mentioned in the warrant. So what I don't understand, whether the people they are looking for were in those tiny boxes. Okay? Imagine, boxes full of money. Hey. Yes, you see the age. Okay, it's a violation of human rights. Okay, then when you look at the case of uh, Zita, this publication entities along Namuongo, how do you call it? Monitor publications versus AG in the Mama and Baba's case. Okay, those guys are uh, police obtained. A search warrant. It specified first floor and second floor to be executed by a father, so and so. The big man got the warrant himself, General uh, friend. He opened, he started from the fourth floor where the big man sits, going down. Okay? They, that's why the, the officers were broken, the windows, everything were destabilized. They waited for them. They had a copy of the warrant. Just within two days, they instituted the matter. A civil matter, a violation of human. Okay. They were looking for certain evidence. These guys had, they said they had recordings. Okay. I don't know why. So, as a result, that one, the warrant wasn't executed by the person mentioned in the warrant. Then second, the time, these guys accepted the warrant up night. Because remember, they condoned off the place. No one was allowed to get out of the enter. Then they started from the fourth floor. The, the warrant was saying first and second. So that's how Monta won, and they were paid. So you see that the issue of execution of the warrant is paramount. Because we have cases and known cases, and one of the lawyers in those cases is coming, aka Dusman coming. Okay, Zora is at the wrong side of the story. So expect, okay, he's coming. Okay, he's a scarce of the devil always. So just know the defense tactics. Okay, <laughs> then after, okay. That um another that something this I want you to understand is what we call objections in women. What do we object? How do we respond? Okay, what do we object? But all this goes back. Do you know the rules of evidence? Because all objections in a criminal rotate around rules of evidence. So, so can I just... okay, so. Let's listen to these rules. I'm not sure how they apply. Okay? One, the rules of evidence. Rules of evidence. Some of them you know them. Some of them you have, you've ever heard of them, but you've never applied them. One, burden of proof. You, you will okay? You're going to use it when you make the judgment, say, eh? on Monday, inshallah. Okay? Then two, burden of proof. Okay, then standard of proof. Okay, then three, relevance and admissibility. Relevance and admissibility. Then two, then another one. Compelability. Competence and compelability of Says. Okay. Hmm? Then we have collaboration, collaboration of evidence. 
then we have the first evidence rule. Now, these are what call rules of evidence. Now, expect questions when these rules have been violated. So you should know how each and every rule here is violated and how a question can be given to you here. Let's start with burden and standards, okay? Burden and, so the question they can ask you, they can tell you, answer, assume you are the judge and you have acquitted the accused in the offense of murder. What give us the grounds you could be based on for your acquittal? So you expect to you know, a judgment. Don't make a judgment. You've given the judgment. Okay. Now give us the reasons of your acquittal. To give them fire. And they have made work easy for you. Okay. So now, counsel. Uh -huh. What grounds do you give for an acquittal? I think they're still sufficient. Yes? I think there's an offense that's not sufficient. It's an offense of murder. So what grounds do they base on to acquit? They want to make it insufficient. Mm -hmm. Yes, counsel? Failure. Yes, sir. Yes, Now. When it comes to budget, the standard of proof, mm -hmm. the burden is on the prosecution. Yes. Now, prosecution has to prove its case beyond reasonable, reasonable doubt. So you said in the case of Uganda versus Katoka TV, mm -hmm. you can say the case of Nyamunyu, you can also say in the case of Nakibal When it comes to budget, it's entirely prosecution to prove. Now, that means that the prosecution, for me to give a judgment in a murder case, prosecution has to prove that they failed. The prosecution failed to prove the murder in their side. Now, on the standard of proof, the, the standard has to be beyond reasonable doubt. Okay. So, you see, that question comes from principle one and two. If not, they can tell you counsel. You are the sitting judge. Make a judgment on the offense of murder. So that means you're going to use burden and standards. You make a judgment. You either convict or convict. They will not tell you that these are the facts. No. Yes, it's all. But when you have someone whom you hate very well, you make that person the murder. Okay? You see more as an example. <laughs> okay. Then, okay. Then the, another one, the third one is relevance and admissibility. We've already talked about this one. This one, one, we have evidence which is relevant, but in Okay. One, evidence where the chain of evidence is broken. Really you should be, they will tell you that one, which is the offense for, you remember, I have, I have a question I saw that that's the offense of that was defilement, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> first, and then wash the liquor and the clothes. Okay, you are the RSA a proceed. Okay, they have a clinic growth and a clinic, and the girl who showered without a medical report. Why you can't take out the fact that she was defiled. Okay, you see, one okay, so that evidence is relevant, but it is what why. Okay, so finally, you have evidence. So, what happens? You add the judge, and then you enter what you call in the second. I just suspect in that case. Okay. 
Yes. So that we can evidence. Remember, now you have evidence of a single identifier. <laughs> okay, let's let, let's proceed. Let's proceed. It's very okay. Yeah, because once you bring sexual related offenses, you will never win an argument. All right, when it has legs, eh? you never win. Okay, then another one. Okay, we have what we call on that very ground. They can give you, give, give you what we call, um, you have expert opinion evidence. Okay, now they can tell you, counsel, you are defense counsel. The prosecution intends to rely on evidence of a video recording. Okay, they want to tender it in court. Proceed. Yes, you are the defense. The prosecution intends to rely on evidence of a video recording. Okay, you are defense counsel. So that means you should be able to think how do we extract and how did the prosecution get that video recording? How did they? So that means you have to object the authenticity of that. It is relevant but not admissible on grounds that it is not authentic. Okay? Yes, that's. Yes, it can be relied upon. But now, what circumstance laws that govern video recordings? Why do we have, when you go to Naburu, there is a station there, which is known as the ICT department. Mm -hmm. They monitor the entire security in this country via video coverage. So they will give you facts, okay? Where it is the offense of murder, okay? But the video recording they have is of her camera, okay? And that video recording was extracted by one of her sons. But that evidence is there. The evidence is relevant, but inadmissible. So what do you do as defense counsel? You have to make an objection that my Lord, whereas section 59 is very clear that evidence should be given by the person who saw or who had. We are left with the fact that uh, we have the best evidence tool and the principle of relevance and admissibility. In the instant case, my Lord, it is very evident that this evidence is relevant, but inadmissible due to the following reasons. One, it wasn't extracted by an expert in that field. Chances are high there was tampering with that evidence. We therefore pray that court inclines to admit such evidence. Why? All expert opinion evidence we object on the ground of authenticity. All, all that evidence, I think that's why the very person who made that evidence should appear so that this person confirms, okay? All. So this issue of relevance and admissibility, please, just know how we, because you did these things in mood. But when they told you that we that these objects for people were objecting on even things that are irrelevant. Okay? Mm -hmm. Someone would just say objection, <laughs> sir. Then, the, <laughs> then you keep quiet. When you don't have an objection because you don't know, but now you're going to face it. Those in civil who are appearing before Council Ikanza, you have to object on the pleadings, whether you like it or not, because that, that's better to have objections. You are a trial advocacy, okay? But we shall make it.
Okay. So you can be that certification. Beyond that, this evidence. If you want to understand the issue of uh, relevance and admissibility of uh, CCTV evidence, read the case of uh, it is um, Honorable who? Yes, Jane Francis Amongin versus Electoral Commission. You remember her case, how it was. She went, she said there was bribery and Vote ranges. So what happened? She had this, uh, one of her returning officers, okay, who had a video recording on the phone. When they're giving out command, they lining up, okay. When they are pre-kicking ballots, the fact is the evidence was there. So the mistake she did, she took this phone. To the This is okay. So also the boy did it. Then she came with the disc in court. She was very sure that she's winning. Okay. So she's the one who she, she's the one who came with the disc. She, they made a prayer. They inserted the disc inside the plane. That's what I see. Then cancel objectives on that end. Says objection, my lord. Whereas the evidence is relevant, but it is inadmissible. Then he started giving grounds of inadmissibility. That one, it is violating section 59. The person who extracted the video is not the person who is standing in it. Then two, chances are high it wasn't extracted by an expert in that field. Okay. Then what she did, she, she canceled, her counsel made a prayer that it is admitted for identification purposes. Then they got the boy. <laughs> they cross-examined the boy and even cried for no good reason. How old are you? 15 years. What do you do for a living? Have a video library. What is your qualification? Senior four. He was even still in form form. Okay? He was still in form form. How? How did you do this? So the evidence was but it was clear evidence. But on the grounds of objections. So now the reason why they can give you as the prosecution. In that very case, prosecution replied. Oh. Because they knew they have no way out. Oh. But whenever you are in court, always find mm -hmm. that evidence of your client remains for people. Okay? So, once you are the prosecution, you just make a prayer that let evidence be maintained before identification. Tomania. But once that evidence doesn't go on record, that means you have no case. So don't allow evidence to get out of. They are going to test in orals. It's like they're going to be interjecting in many of your questions. Why? They want to drive you this side, but all you have to take them this side by force. Once you know that your answer is right, you had, okay? When she was submitting in the auditorium, Castle, they are not even before she completed the answer. No, 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 Castle, there is no room for you are in court. That's how it is done. You are they, are, they were telling her to think you are in court. There is no time for that application for amendment. You are in court. What does that mean? At that time, go from court to court. Okay, remember if she allowed, okay, she made that prayer for amendment. Literally, she had considered in line three. You have considered that, okay, my play doesn't disclose the cause of action. That's why she was telling her, you are in court. Your client is there. You don't have time. Why? Okay? So now, you have to think when you are in court. So don't leave court when the evidence is out. Leave it. Okay? Fight. Once you, because now the objection will stand. 
If you are the jad, fight for the objection to be overruled. Okay? Yes, sir. Now, in such a scenario, we are seeing basic evidence for this when the the author is the one who is seeing the court. So, is it that the number of the human beings is the one who is seeing that? Yes, because she's a single identifying. You know the rules govern single identifying witnesses. Uh -huh. But now the collaboration would have been the medical report. She showered. The sermons are not there now. Mm -hmm. The clothes that she was putting on, she washed them. So, do you have a case? <laughs> okay. So, you get it. Or you just had jacked. Yes? Yes? Members, listen. Okay. You don't know. That you you know it, okay? So now, okay. Then another principle we have is compatibility of witnesses. Compatibility of the general is all witnesses are. Competent, but not comparable. They will give you facts. They say that uh, Rashid is married to Amina. Rashid is being charged with the offense of corruption. Is appearing in court today. All witness competent, but not comparable. Okay, so they will tell you that one Rashid is married to Amina. Rashid is charged with corruption. You are his lawyer. The matter is coming up today for hearing of the prosecution's case. As you are seated in court, Rashid is surprised and yours. You see Amina standing in the door, ready to testify against the husband. Counsel, proceed. So you have you are objecting to that. So your duty is to object. Okay, again, is that witness why she is not a comparable witness? The, okay, they have told you Rashid is married. Okay, to underline the word marriage. What is the effect of marriage? You are one. So literally, Rashid is testifying against himself. So and the law is. In such circumstances, okay, the wife can only be a comparable witness of the prosecution with the consent of the husband. It is okay. You get it. So, as you defense counsel, what will you do for us? You have to object, but the way you are going to add up your words when you are objecting is so paramount, very paramount. Okay, because now for you, you know our principles. Okay, 
that you have the principle of competence and comparability. So that means okay. Now this question relies in competence and comparability. Okay. Yes. Yes. That is it. She has this consent from me. It is okay. Why do you think we have a case in family? Which case is that? That interprets customary marriage. Hmm? We have we have Mifumi. Mifumi verses. We have another Ara verses. Amikeyo. That case, it was a criminal case. It is Republic versus Amikeyo. Mikeyo stole a bicycle. Yes, okay. Those guys stole a bicycle. This guy decided to come with a bicycle. They, he took the bicycle inside the house. So the, the wife was standing in the court when the husband is hiding the bicycle. But remember, during those days, only colonial masters used to have bicycles. Okay? So, <laughs> because these guys had refused to pay him, in a salon, I did not give them a You know, Africans were stubborn, but they, they are started becoming stubborn, eh? Because that's the era of Mau Mau and Maji Maji. Okay? So, Africans are started becoming stubborn. So, what happened? Remember, by that time, the high court was presided over by a white man. Okay? And anything concerning the white man could go to the high, high court. So, this guy was taken to the high court. So, the state said, told the wife, you either come and testify that she has been hiding the bicycle. Or we also charge you and give it in prison. You will die in prison. Very early in the morning, she was in court to testify. He brought the bicycle. <laughs> now imagine that's your wife. Okay. You are looking at her. She's explaining how you came with the bicycle. So, counsel for the accused raised a defense. Okay. He, has to, he, had, he objected to that evidence, claiming that. The rules of evidence are that a wife is a competent but not a comparable witness against the accused. Then the state replied and said that customary marriage is not marriage. Reason, it is bride purchase, not bride. That's how that, came, that case came to interpret bride prices. Because these guys wanted to justify that because that, that principle works where there is marriage. So they had to first prove existence of marriage. And their marriage was customary marriage. So the wives were saying, no, that is not marriage. That's why we knew Africans don't get married. So the court had to first dig into family law and then they come back to claiming. So after proving that it is marriage, that's how he survived. Okay. But you know those days, men would understand. Not like many of these days, but not those who are here and at all this. Those are outside. Yes. 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 You that may be connivance. Are you joking? Yes. What if I steal 500 billion? Okay. I, my wife knows, but I know once I go, I will sleep there for two years. Okay. By the time I come back, I will use that command and I change that one day. Like, I, I sleep there. Yeah. When I know when I come, um, I come back, I'm uh, I'm the new dog. I I go there. Hmm? I just tell the please wake up very early by six get at God at this five please. Because what will happen, we shall use that ground as a mitigation factor. Okay, when we are in a lockdown, because to show that I am cooperative with God, even I sent my wife to testify against me. 
So I should be given a lenient sentence. That should be a stupid magistrate. <laughs> hey, it's a bright move, not for a dull lawyer. Okay, so I will get it. So now, then the last principle is what we call collaboration. Okay, so now, what you should know the different categories of evidence that should be collaborated. Okay. They, today, Mr. Kunya told you deficient between identification and identification parents. Okay? One of the two is a way of collaborating the, the other, but you have issues with identification. The general is, okay, one where it is a single identifying witness, which the evidence you have, it requires. That's one. Okay. Then two evidence of which has contradictions. It needs collaboration. Then three. Okay. Evidence which has contradictions and inconsistencies. It requires collaboration. Okay. Then which has inconsistencies, contradictions and inconsistencies, then also circumstantial evidence. So now they'll give you facts, they tell you counsel, you are defense counsel, the prosecution is solely relying on evidence of Aisha. Okay? And Aisha has informed during the examination, Aisha informed the court that as she saw the man coming, she decided to hide under the table and she even switched off the phone because she knew the light could easily direct them. She was under terrible fear, but she saw. <laughs> you get it? She's the eyewitness, but she's a single identifying witness. Okay, so now you ask yourself, how would we deal with that? Courts are always cautioned. That's how you start. Okay? That's how you start. Because you know the word in that case. Okay? That courts should be always be cautioned in convicting on single identifying witnesses where the circumstances warranting the identification were not clear. Look at her circumstances. She was in fear. She was hiding under the table and no light. So you want court to proceed and convict you. Okay, which case is that? Abdallah Nabulele. Okay, so how are you going to object to that? Okay, are you going to accept court to proceed with such evidence? Object to it. Okay, so that evidence will require collaboration. So, how do you collaborate that evidence? By conducting, if she, there was some opportunity of seeing, okay. Then we shall conduct what's called identification parents. So identification parents, they collaborate evidence of a single identifying witness. Okay, that's why he told you, please differentiate between identification parents and identification evidence. You see? Heads of subjects where these guys are going to put in emphasis. Okay? Everyone had a specific area. Just knowing if you are appearing before that panel, that is your glorious part. Okay? So once you see one of them on your panel, raise God. Okay? Because that's what they're going to ask. Okay? So then, um, Then the best evidence rule. That one, you know, it continues in it, not so? Yes, that's Oh, okay, 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 yes. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Yeah, she was able to identify who is at the same 
But during the daytime, why there is the light? Okay, so those two things. Castle is talking about circumstantial. They, they can also give tell that castle give us for circumstances of circumstantial evidence. Because the reason why they put emphasis on evidence, they know you've not read evidence law and you didn't appreciate it at undergrad. Okay. Let me first start dealing with us, eh? Circumstantial evidence. Okay. How do you defend circumstantial evidence? It should be collaborated as well. What can't rely on it? Sorry. Okay. Uh which case were this? The Prime Minister. Who read the case of uh, Akibar Godi? It, it had circumstantial evidence. Okay, even Agrochingi and uh, this madam who soon had the husband. Where I'm saying it. Those cases, they have good law on circumstantial evidence. What, which one should we start with? When you look at the case of Akibar Godi, okay, he made a phone call, okay, telling this girl how he's coming home, okay. But the girl was over asking a lot of questions, okay? Because remember, he already had some other matter, okay, of corruption. But the girl knew about the whereabouts of the man. So the girl was over asking because the girl, the, that MP had issues. How can you marry a girl of that age? I would not sure. Okay? <laughs> okay? So now, what happened? Because the girl was over asking, he knew that he was, he's going to face it, rap. So he saw that this girl, but he made a mistake. After killing, he made a phone call where the colleague who was in Kabaragala. Okay? So immediately after the incident, he left home. Okay? So they told him he raised what for the defense of. Alabama. And you know us that defense is raised. So the prosecution had no direct evidence putting him at the crime scene. All the evidence they had was circumstantial. Okay? How? We have what we call a doctrine of recent possession. You can't even just enter or just pass Educate us on the doctrine of recent possession. Hey, recent possession. Okay, it is circumstantial evidence. Okay, how this girl had talked to a friend. Okay, when she is standing with Akibar Godi, the friend she talked with last. Okay, when she with because she called this friend Amgama Banan. This guy has been overcoming, but he's coming home right now. And she switched off the phone. So the last person she talked with testified that she was with Akibaru. But in the last time, recent possession, the person you used to you were with before your death. Then they, they started asking him. They asked the girl, at what time did you talk to her? Then they, they looked at the time when the, the girl talked with the deceased, okay? And then they looked at the time when Atibarogodi called. The time was starting. Circumstantial evidence. They started collecting data. that, okay, it seems this gentleman was the last person to be with this. That's what called the doctrine of recent possession. But it wasn't sufficient. Then the state had to think between lines. They asked him, where were you? He said, I was in Kampala. Where? He said, Kavala Gala. Okay, they said, okay. Then they made an application to maintain an airtel to trace the mask in Jibuli. Ah! Okay, so after checking, they made a tariff of time when he called the colleague in Kavala Gala when he was standing at his home at the crime scene. At the crime scene. 
they had no direct evidence to put him at the crime, but they used circumstantial evidence to put him at the crime scene. They looked at recent position that, okay, you, if this girl said that she talked to the deceased at four, and the last phone call the deceased received from you was at 3.45, this difference of five minutes was sufficient for you to get home. Okay, now immediately from five minutes, okay, after the deceased had passed on, you made a phone call to Kavalagala and you're telling us that you were not home, you were in Kavalagala. So it's fooling who? Then MGN came in, okay, with the mask. Then after bringing the, the, the call logs, the guy made five calls when he's in his home calling different people in Kampala. He wanted a lead car because he wanted to leave the place very fast so that time doesn't carry. But he forgot to get someone in Airtel to date the call logs. <laughs> That's how they got him. But they didn't have direct, but they used what called circumstantial. So, an example of circumstantial evidence is the doctrine of recent possession. Okay. <laughs> Don't, when the government wants you, you they can't pay. I'm very sure. Okay? You get it? I think that it was worth it. So now you get it. So sometimes you may have what we call weak circumstantial. Then when you look at this case of uh, where I'm saying, okay? The person who gave evidence was a child of tender years at first. Why? This boy was in the sitting room, but the bedroom was just adjacent to the sitting room. So the maid had bought the pump already. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. That's Susan Chibula. Okay. The maid in Susan Chikula had bought the pan a long time with orders from the boss. So what happened? When the man came back, okay, and then he went to the bedroom to sleep. He slept on the bed, but when they, they made a mistake, the door was slightly open. So the boy in the sitting room could see. Okay, so the boy said, Mommy and aunt, I saw them cutting that. Now, the mistake, Susan made a mistake. After cutting, she stepped in blood. And the mistake she did, the door was closed. Okay? So after killing, she came out shouting, okay, to seek for public. Now, the mistake she did, the footsteps were coming from. You get it? Then when she reached at the, at the door, she opened from inside. Okay? And she did, she forgot at least to have in the mirrors. You get it? To show that there was a scaffold. So when the I.O. came, he looked at the footsteps. Okay? Because the evidence of the minor was weak. It needed collaboration. Then the I.O. came. Looked at the Bedroom where the guy was lying, and then these footsteps remain. They trace our footsteps first. Mm -hmm. Then after they look at this door. Okay, the key. She left the key in the lock. Which which thief has that time to open and even leave the key? You get it. So how did the thieves enter? When the door was closed, that's the mistake she did. Okay, she would have opened and threw the key outside and even knocked there. Like Buddha says, to show that there was a scam, they entered by. So they entered peacefully. They slept in the house. They opened from inside. They came out. They didn't hurt anyone at home. They didn't take anything. That's how she ended up in trouble. Why? Evidence of a minor required 
collaboration. So they use circumstantial evidence to collaborate. When you come to this one of where I'm saying, okay, she made a lot of time. She just all the maids at home, okay, preparing for what? House party. <laughs> House party. The way she never wanted to do work at home, okay, and she, she, she gave all the maids freedom to go. <sighs> preparing for what? Eh? House part and it's happening. So you get it. So when it comes to circumstantial evidence, this is any evidence that just draws an inference to the occurrence of the event. It is not direct, but once you make a follow-up, okay? How can they ask you this question? They can tell you that uh cancel, you are the RSA in the offense of murder. Okay. The accused says that she was not that the prime C says she was watching Madrid versus Chelsea. Okay. However, when you read the file, her mother says that she last saw her putting on a blue jumper and a short black skirt. The I.O. says that on making a search, the blue jumper and a short black skirt was found in the accused's house. But the dead body wasn't there. So the only evidence you have, you don't have evidence when the sky is peeling. Even the dead body is nowhere to be seen. They want you, you are the RSA. You have to make submissions on that ground. So what does that mean? The evidence you have is not direct evidence. It is circumstantial evidence. So how they want your argument on how you're going to place this guy in the element of participation. So they want to use the angle of recent possession. Why? The statement of the mom says she last saw her putting on a blue jumper and a short black. That is the only evidence you have. So that evidence requires collaboration. So where have you found the blue jumper and the short black? So the question is, where did you get this jumper? Okay. Now we are asking the accused. Where did you get the blue jam? If the if the deceased was last seen putting on a blue jumper, okay, and a short black skirt, and this these two properties are in your possession, the deceased was found dead. How did you get them? Okay, how did you get them? Huh? You know this, <laughs> huh? okay. How you get it? So this circumstantial evidence of the doctrine of research possession is corroborating the statement of the man. You get it? Where you have a, a single witness, you don't quote, really realize on it. Okay? You see, criminal is rich in questions. That's why I'm telling you it's a, a bit tricky in orals, eh? because it has a lot of practice. Whatever I have in the books, it's a waste of time to hope in the final exam. But here, no. OK? OK? OK. Now, OK, you have all that evidence, and everything is good, OK? So where everything is good, we shall proceed and go to the court. Now, when you go to court, it's time for for try. Okay? <laughs> for try. Why for today? Try. Why for today? You ask a lot of questions than how you think. Okay? Okay? 
No, but we talked about that. Mm-hmm. Our mm-hmm. video is fine. Evidence should be given by the person who had to do so. Okay? So now, I want us to enter the tribe. Don't worry, I'm going to give that general overview of screaming. But after. Okay? Yes. But after putting emphasis on this. Yes? Yes. It depends on the circumstances. Was there light? Was he sober? Was he under fear? Such things. Okay? Because we have places where by eight everyone is sleeping. We have places. You know your villages. You know, hey, you know your villages. Okay? By eight, some people from Masakai here, yeah, they are sleeping. Meeting in the trading center is an offense. Okay? Because they knew the neighbor is a night. night dance. <laughs> and the first house is here, another one is at Nana. And those guys, they, they are too close. So we only have such places, even seven. That evidence may not be considered. Okay? So put that into consideration. So now, we want to enter into this trial. In the trial, the things they already ask is what we call examination. You will meet the panel where the director is to tell you, I am a witness. Examine me. Okay? Yes, they do that. Okay, Head Bacos, she's a good prosecutor. She's a very good prosecutor. Okay? She's a government employee. Okay? She's a good, because she's a P of premium. Though you've never seen her in class. But she's on the panel of premium. You'll find her, she'll tell you, counsel, I am no witness. It's the offense of murder. A cross-examining. Okay? Examining chief. Did you see or did you Okay, hear? examining in. So the first thing they are testing, do you know the questions that are asked in cross? Examination, examination in chief and read. Okay. Do you understand examination? So they will tell you, examine me. Once you examine her, she will keep quiet. She will keep quiet totally. She will just look at you like this. Okay? But they are not telling you. Okay? For you, when she keeps quiet, you also keep quiet. Your time is counting. At the end of the day, they will tell you, time up. Okay? So, when we are in trial, we are adducing evidence by way of leading our witnesses. Where we have two categories of final witnesses. We have what you call a refractory witness and a hostile witness. So a refractory witness is a witness who refuses to answer anything. Okay? Over to CJ. You cost examine him no home back. The guy keeps quiet. The even he doesn't speak, even taking him keeps quiet. Because you know, once the, the accused keeps quiet, you end a plea of ah, the, 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 the stage of please done, then he comes back for mention. Keeps quiet. That stage is also done. He comes back for trial. Ah, he keeps quiet. So you, you think what to do. Okay? That's why he does a bank lawyers in his criminal matters. Because he knows it will become a problem. Okay? So, they will ask, what will you do? You are, you are counsel. But remember that question. It has to be You can be a judicial officer or, or counsel. When the witness, witness is behaving. So, ask yourself. Okay? If you are counsel, you make an application that that witness is declared a refractory. 
A witness who keeps quiet is a refractory witness. We are going there. I'm going to differentiate the two. Okay? So, because for you, you studied it in a theoretical part. Okay? To declare this witness a refractory. Because once he's declared, coach has the discretion. Court knows how to handle him. Then they give you the, the second question. They tell you, cancel. That, yes, it's oral. Then they cancel. The application has been granted. Okay? The witness has been declared. Now, assume you are the sitting magistrate. Proceed. Okay? <laughs> Proceed. Okay? The, the first question has been, You've made an application that your witness is declared a refractory. Then they say, assume you are the sitting magistrate. Proceed. On the same facts, they'll tell you, proceed. Why? When you read the law regarding refractory witnesses, where a prayer is made and court considers that this witness is refractory, you make an order of detention. Refractory witness. So yeah. that means if you are the city magistrate, you said, having analyzed the conduct of PW1, I declare him to be a refractory witness and I do hereby order his detention up to, because this person is detained for some time, what's six days? Okay? But below, so you have the discretion. Then you say the matter is here by adjourned until that date. Simple. They want you to own the language of the magistrate now. They want you to see whether you can shift from an advocate to a magistrate on the same thing. Okay. Uh, again, even if they when they bring him back and he does the same thing, that dial. Until he learns the proceeding. Okay? Then, if not that, we have a witness known as a hostile witness. Okay. Yes? Every time he comes back, they commit him. Okay, other eight days. But when you look at the act, it specifies for. Okay? <laughs> okay? You don't exceed eight. Eh? Yes. So now they can tell you another fact. They can give, they can tell you. Yes. As called an order of detention. Okay. An order of detention. Okay. So then another one. Okay. They can tell you, counsel. I am your witness. Cross examine. Or, or examine me the chief. Okay. Then once you start cross examining points, whatever type of witness I've given you, this person will speak in the opposite. Okay. They tell you, what did you see? Me? I didn't see anything. You get it. This is the prosecution witness was in the book. I single identify witness. You ask her. Do you know that that man? No. <laughs> what happened on that day? Nothing. But remember, you have a matter forever. <laughs> but she's saying he doesn't know the accused. So now, what does that mean? She is testifying in favor of. She has become hostile. What do you do? You are counseling. You are in court. You are in court. You make an application that this witness is declared the first time. But the, only this language. Because they are not going to ask you for solutions. They are going to ask you to proceed. Okay? You will not tell them that I will make an application. You just stand up. You say, My Lord. On the onset of this, I had presented PW1 as my witness. However, the witness is testifying in the opposite 
I pray that this honorable court declare a sin, a hostile witness, and I am granted leave to cross examine. Okay, because once a witness is declared the first time, remember you court will be noting you ask her, Do you know that man? She said, Court is noting. Okay, so you want you want to leave that evidence on record, yeah. Once you don't cross examine, remember this person has been testified in favor of air device. Okay, cut now we choose the moon. Okay, so you go for what we call. Yes, once the jail submit, stand up. There is no advocate who submits when you've gone to court to court, unless court tells you to sit. Okay, so I want to sit when even the judge is sitting. Who told you? You've seen in the mood. You guys are submitting when you're sitting. Okay, now you're going all us. They give you a question when you are. An advocate, you see it. Five words. They don't even waste your time. It's a sign of disrespect. Once they said you are this acting judge, Tula, Kakana Limbao. Okay? That they told you we are going to give you role play. The kinds of criminal. They said, expect role play questions. Role play questions. Not like, what is this? What is this? No. Role play questions. Criminal and civil best time. You either die or they die. Okay? So, if not, they can tell. So, that we've seen two categories of witnesses. Okay? That one, they don't arrest. After cross examining, this person will be discharged. Is no longer fit and proper witness. You get another witness. That's why you cross examine so that you wait your it down. Don't leave it on record. Okay? Yes? Mm. Now, yes, you've asked this person questions and he has testified in the opposite. Those very questions you cross examine your witness on them so that you don't leave them in their favor. Okay. You object, you object to cancel credibility. Yes, you credibility. Okay. Yes, cancel. Okay, so let's proceed. Let's proceed. Okay, then another one. Okay, they can ask you, they can tell you, cancel. You are in, you are the prosecution, you are the prosecution. The matter is coming up to them for hearing of the prosecution is yes. As you've entered court, you that your principal witness has been knocked down by a speeding car and has succumbed to the proceed. Just a switch. They have used the word principal witness. Principal witness. He has been knocked down by a speeding car and has succumbed to death. You are in court. Proceed. Okay. You are the judge. Okay. Why are you at the judge? Therefore, you are the RS. A. You are the RSA. They have used the word principal. That means overdoing the oath. So that means you no longer have evidence. So you are the judge. 
you say I pray for another man as I will inform God on what on what makes in the new course. Why? You don't have the power to enter on another. That is a power that is only at the only as a decree. So you can't enter another prosecute. What you have you first take the fight the DPP, they peruse the fire, and then they advise you But if they say you are the DPP, it will be different. Okay, you got it. When you are the DPP, the big man, okay, okay, yes, but this is RSA. RSA acts for and on behalf of, but the powers reserved for the DPP on no one acts on his or her behalf. Okay, okay, with your happens in the magistrate's court on matters that are tribal by right? the magistrate's court in the high court, it is a no prosecute, and then with you can even be done by the RSA, no prosecute, DPP, that those forms. Are always signed by the DPP only. Okay. So you get okay. Now John Francis, it is termination of criminal proceedings. Those forms are there, but we pass it in Japan and they are given out to our approval. That's all right. I beg your pardon, Nora, prosecute uh, that, that term. Remember, the challenge is state will keep on. We have now, they can tell it can be like this. I can tell you, counsel, you are defense counsel. You are coming to court for the fourth time. Okay? For the fourth time. Every time you've been coming to court, state has been praying for an adjournment on grounds that they are not ready to proceed. That is the answer you're looking for. So proceed, guys. Make a prayer for dismissal for want of prosecution. It's an oral application. Yes, Council Alan, your hand is up. Uh, thank you, Council Rashid. I was I wanted to uh, ask for you to uh, uh, clarify more on it. Well, I beg okay. your pardon okay. about the same. Okay, okay. So you get it. Best can you want to do to understand those things that happen in. In court, okay. Mm. Now, so you appear in court four times, and the state is on the second adjournment. Adjournment, yes. Thank you. Because what happens, it is either three or four times, okay. If the state is does doesn't give the five reasons, the last time court will dismiss. So that question can also be asked. They tell you you are the sitting magistrate. The state is appearing for the people time seeking for us at the Proceed. Okay. <laughs> Proceed. Remember, justice delayed is justice. Nine. Uh, that's the technique you dismiss for what that is article okay. one six Now, also, we have this question. Because uh, uh, I, I will show you that this will bring covered some things in there. They can tell you, cancel. You have you are cancel in private practice. You have just received instructions in criminal case number this and this, Uganda versus Rebecca and so forth. The matter is coming up for hearing. You are appearing in court for the first time. Proceed. 
you cancel for the accused. Okay? You've just got it instructions. The matter is coming up for further hearing. Okay? Further hearing of the prosecution's case. Proceed. You are in court. Yes, I'm making an application seeking the declaration. I look for the answer is disclosure because you don't know what has been. You get it. Why? When you look at your topics, okay? When you look at your topics, they have that content, okay? Because you have just appeared in the matter, you don't know what took place, okay? But remember, also, they have told you further hearing. That issue of further hearing, what does that indicate? There has been a examination that took place in your absentia. Actually, as an student, this is your own post. Okay. If you have that, okay. Just answer. I However, when you look at Article 28, provides a right to pay and a right to fair hearing includes sufficient time to prepare a defense okay so how can you prepare a defense when you don't have the record okay. so that's what that's what that's why sometimes i must have applied for it in the magistrate court okay. because that's the ground we based on to buy carrying because even if you're asking okay. for bail the state will send you back now imagine I was in an application for bail yesterday. State was there, he sanctioned the file hustle. I made an application for bail. I was even ready with money. He said, I can't make a response now. She had an interest in the matter. <laughs> she said, I need to file an affidavit in reply. I can't proceed orally. I looked at this brother and I said, okay. Okay, I need a day or two. He said, I'm not available on Friday. Why don't you try on Monday? She refused. She had issues. She had an interest in the matter. She was, she was. <laughs> okay, so let's play off that back. Okay? Now, the very question you asked had that element of so disclosure, and then they have something they can ask at times, okay? They can tell you that uh, counsel, you have just gotten instructions in this criminal matter on making an application for disclosure and record of proceedings. You realize that the prosecution had cross examined, had ex examined. Two witnesses. It is on its last witness. Cancel proceed. Okay. They tell you can't. You are cancel for the defense. You have just gotten instructions. You, you made an application for disclosure and a record of proceedings. On perusing the record, you realize that the prosecution has examined three of its witnesses. It is coming up for its fourth and last witness. Cancel proceed. Hmm? Okay. 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 Have you ever had what? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a try. Yes. Now, nah, it's called an application to recall. It is under which law? 
it is section that is in civil. Okay. And I am bringing on that this is okay. But that's what we call we make an order to be open that matter so that these witnesses are recalled. Okay, not yet. An order to reopen that is civil. Cancel, no. No, cancel. What happens, okay? You can't invoke civil procedure rules in criminal, okay? It has the same. But here you just make an oral application. Why? You are using the right of fair hearing. It's the answer. Okay? As a student, yeah. Okay, but let's proceed. Uh -huh. Let's listen, okay? Now, that question may be this way. They can ask you when you have given non obtained a record of proceedings. So, what do you do? You first add them to this one and then make an application for record of. Once you get the record, then you proceed and make the prayer to record. Even when they are you know what to base? What I want to base on to make arguments? Yes. You can't rely on art of another advocate, regulation fellow. Our art is not the same. Okay. You've ever done the question. You are in the same class, but you have different answers. <laughs> okay, you get it. So now, then uh, we have a prominent question. But uh, most of the other questions, they are of a magistrate. Know how to make rulings. Know how another thing. Know how to conduct pre-taking. Okay. Know how to conduct pre-taking. Okay. Know the working of a judge or a magistrate where a plea of not guilty is taken, where a plea of guilty is entered, where a plea of presidential pardon is entered where a plea of previous acquittal. They can tell that counsel, assume you are the sitting magistrate, and upon reading the charges to the accused, he has answered, he has answered the charge by saying that he was previously charged and convicted. So that means it's a plea of previous, the telecounsel proceed. What are you going to do? Who proves? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the you proceed. Okay. No, you are the magistrate. Perhaps now. Are you going? To, are you going to end that plea there and then? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. But he also, as he also, also court has to investigate on such those two pleas, okay, of previous conviction and presidential pardon. So you don't see it, okay? So basically, what is left, they can ask you. This is the same efficient between sanctioning. And consenting to charges. Sanctioning. Sanctioning and consenting to charges. And out circumstances do we do sanctioning? And under what circumstances do we 
conceitos. Okay. Ah. At what you guys have been doing? At what stage is actually five? Okay. He said, upon perusal and ascertaining that, and ascertaining that evidence is sufficient, then you proceed and start from the file. Go right. Then consenting to a charge. We have charges that cannot be just taken to court. Okay? We first consent to them. During COVID, during our time, there is a, a, an offense that has just come. Okay? And the first person to be charged with that offense was uh, is it, uh, Francis Zake. Okay? Is it a uh, willful? That offense is under section 91 of the penal code, or 91. Okay. Uh -uh. Willful spreading of infectious disease. Okay. That offense, it came during COVID time. Yeah? So now, the first person was Zake. So, <laughs> Senyonyi, they are the first sample test. It was the first ever. So now, the, what happened? The officers preparing the charges, huh, they had issues with the most appropriate offense. So what they did, they had the file, they took the RSA, give, give us the answer. Why? They couldn't sanction this file. Why? That offense was not familiar. Okay? It needed. Uh -huh. So she had first consent to it. The RSA of Indiana because it started from that side of Zake. Consenting, we have because once you peruse the file and you realize that uh, it is not possible, don't waste time. You don't waste time, okay? You don't consent to that. Okay. Consenting is like arguing that. Sanctioning when the file is going for investigations are now consenting. You can even you consider that it's okay. It will take on go on with the, the investigations. You consent that that charge is possible. Okay. Mm. Remember, RSA acts for and on behalf of. The DPP. Now the challenge is we have two people. The R the, the IG, IGG and the DPP. The DPP has the powers to consent to charges under the anti-corruption. You know why? Those charges are hard. Listen, okay. Those charges are hard. You can when you read the facts, you see fraud. Okay. May I read them? I see embezzlement. May I read them? I see causing financial loss. One, no. Well, no. So, what happens? The challenge we have the law is not clear. The, the IGG consents on those charges. Okay. But you have circumstances where the DPP consents on those charges. Okay. The DPP has overall powers, but for strict adherence to the law, it is prudent that the IGG consents because the presumption is the IGG understands and corruption matters more than anyone else. When you go to the anti corruption, you can visit this tomorrow. Okay. okay. Yes. Yes. 
Okay, members, listen. Okay, the reason why anti corruption they refer to the IT is a specialized kind of criminal proceedings. We have charge sheets. If you've not been on news today. We have catches that have been drawn for some ministers who are appearing tomorrow. Our iron sheets. <laughs> <Too bad. laughs> we saw one who was crying. No corruption. Okay? So, now, they can ask you to give offenses that are consented to by the IGG and offenses that are consented to by the DPP. So once they say the DPP, you see what we call street offenses, the statutory offenses, just list all of them. Those ones, the DPP has the power to consent. Why? Those offenses are offenses that they just don't wake up and they prove. They are hard. You can even ask an office, what do you understand by protected species? I need a demand. They are because of charge sheet. But because for them, they drop, they bring to you. They don't know the burden you're going to have in speaking that English in court. Okay? It is hard to support some things, but for them, they can rush and complete the statements only the evidence you have. My dear. May I had an issue now for an exam. The exam was huge, it had 72 pages. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So let's first come. What's referring? That's where we start from. What is referring? Mm. Yes. She has all the powers there. Other faces that were under the other statute, she was that she was the which section pass? Okay. Uh huh. I was going What I know, they just consent, but the, the referring by the DPP. Okay. Yes, I just Yeah. But the DPP is sanctioned. Yes. Okay. But who refers? Yeah. Because I've ever seen the, I've never seen the IG in court. Okay. Because we get the law to be very back to us. So now, we have things we should put into consideration. Or we are not it to the But if they ask you, um, we are having two more questions, then I gave you a wrap up and we call it a day. Okay? Kakai, they ask you, they say that. Um, Do you know Marema Vidis? Yes? Do you know him? Eh? In regards to his matters, okay, what powers do you have as the DPP? Yes. 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 Yes.
So that's so literally I've been testing what we call powers of the So that's what I want us to look at last and then we'll give a wrap up and we call it a day. Okay, so let's look at powers of the DPP. This, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So you ready the you ready the MCA? Okay, you read the penal code, the criminal procedure code act. How many provisions do you that talk about powers of the DP? <laughs> if you share between duties and powers. Okay. So now let's look at powers. What the power to enter a no prosecute. Okay. The power to enter a no prosecute. That is in the TIA, but I'm certain of the exact section. Eh? The power to enter a no rep prosecute. 134. Yes, Council. It's section 134. The section 134. Okay. Then another one. Council of DPP. Okay. Then another one. A power to take over. Okay, matters instituted by private persons. Okay, that's the Malema video. Mm -hmm. Then another power. The night bill. Another power. Another power. Then also to withdraw matters in the magistrates' courts. No prosecuting the high court <laughs> withdraw is in the magistrate courts. Yes. Okay. Then another one council. Okay. The power to direct. Is that a duty council? It's a duty. Okay. It's a duty. Powers are discretionary. Okay. That was as a way I tried to may, 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 may. But duties, he has an option. Okay. Then let's look at duties of the DPP. Yeah. Duties of the DPP. Okay. Are you mad they are under Article 120, clause 3. One, a duty to institute criminal. Okay. Article 120, clause 3. A duty to order further investigations. A duty to peruse. Police files, investigations, then a duty to peruse a police file, then a duty to, <laughs> to allocate files for pro bono. Is that also due to? Mm. Okay. The duty to allocate files, not the not the register. The then, uh, this is just giving out files for pro bono. Okay. Then, a duty. Then, a duty. A duty to handle complaints. Okay. So this is called a whatever you bring or take a yo. More fun I call it. Okay. Okay. We bypass. You leave the regional area. You go to the big, the big person. Okay. You write just copy to a region. Okay. Then you not know, take our name. Workers' house. Okay. Pro bono, what happens? We have files. Okay. Where 
people have no advocates. Okay? So the DPP has the power to appoint those persons to represent on pro bono basis. Those who, those guys who are doing a pro bono here, you're going to enjoy your money in only being clutching. They pay 700 monthly. Yeah. <laughs> Those doing clinical aid. They pay you guys. Yeah. Yeah. You'll ask your colleagues in country. That's when you realize that. Hey. <laughs> they are going to send them to a rumor, a human doing. So, members, let's get back, let's get back, okay? Members, let's get back, let's get back, okay? Let's get back, okay? Then, a duty to organize, a duty to organize free bargain sessions. A duty to organize the bargain sessions. ETC, ETC. Mm. So now, at least I have to go through those things before I do anything. Okay. No. Free bargain sessions. Okay. Council talked about amendment. Before you say amendment, ask yourself under what circumstances we amend. Okay. So the fact, the question you ask yourself, do you know what amounts to a defective charge? Because we only amend a defective charge. Okay? So, one, they can, they can give you a file. Okay? Where the officer drafted the charge sheet and already preferred the charge. But upon perusing the file, when the facts disclose another offense, so that means that of that is effective, you are made. Okay? Then you may read the file when the charge sheet, everything seems to be okay. But when they have used the wrong law, okay? Wrong law. When you read the statement, it doesn't match with the particulars, you are made. Okay? You are made. And where? The charge sheet is violating the rules, okay? Governing drafting of charge sheets under section 88 of the MCA, you are meant. Where the charge sheet is violating the rules of framing charges under section 88 of the MCA, you are meant. Did you read those rules? Okay. So now, We've been drafting charge sheets all along. On what basis? Section 88 of the MCA gives you the rules governing framing of. So you've been drafting charge sheets all along without following the rules. Can I go away? Monday, what was your charge sheet? They can ask you what's the distinction between a charge sheet and an indictment? Okay. What's the distinction between an indictment and a charge sheet? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. The answer is a charge sheet initiates criminal, institutes criminal proceedings. Okay. A charge sheet institutes criminal proceedings okay then an indictment is a committal document because a charge sheet okay institutes criminal proceedings and an indictment is a committal document an indictment is addressed to the high court only okay an indictment is addressed to the High Court only. That's why one of the Rakamba, the High Court is informed by the Director of Public Prosecutions that the accused will be or is indicted of the following charges. One, statement of the offense. 
murder, contrary to section this and this. Particulars, you so and so with malice of so and so unknowingly because the death of this and this by stabbing. Take notice that that's the kindness. So we are going to the indictment. The freedom. Okay. So work upon that. So now let's do this. Council asked for that chronological flow of criminal. Let's just listen. Okay. So now criminal is a procedure course unit. Okay. It being the procedure course unit, you should be able to appreciate the procedure. How things flow. Okay. How things flow. Criminal is summarized in five words. We have complainant, suspect, accused, convict, and then appealers. That's the entire criminal. So they can ask you, counsel, who initiates criminal proceedings? Criminal proceedings are initiated by a complainant who raises a complaint against a suspect. Okay? And when you look at Article 23, under what circumstances can someone's liberty be restricted on reasonable suspiciousness that a person is about to commit or has committed an offense? A complainant has complained against the suspect. The suspect is being suspected of committing an. So how, how will we restrict this person's liberty? Then the next one will be arrest. Then ask yourself. How do we arrest? Section 2 of the Criminal Procedure Code Act says arrest is done by confinement. What are the different types of arrest? We have arrest with a warrant and arrest without a warrant. So we presume that this person has been arrested. Upon his arrest, he is called a suspect. What are the rights of a suspect? You go under Article 20, he read. A suspect is under Article 20. A right to police bond, a right to be informed the reason of his or her arrest in the language he or she understands, a right to be detained in the lawful and gazetted place, a right not to be subject to human degrading treatment, a right to be treated equally, it is it is okay, a right to a lawyer, a right to a phone call, a right to inform his or her relative. Okay, now this suspect is at police. Once you bring this suspect. We have what we call discharge of persons arrested. Okay, then we shall go for discharge. Who discharges this person? The arresting. So the arresting officer will record what we call the arresting officer's statement. Then the, the suspect will be handed over to the OC station. The OC station will allocate this file to the investigating officer who will record the plain suspect is statement okay now the plain suspect statement is recorded it can't be rhyming with that of the complainant okay so as a result of that we need to bring these statements at at the same page this is done by way of what we call investigations okay in a criminal law they are not called investigations they are called Searches. Then that takes us to what we call searches. How do we search? We have two types of searches. A search with a warrant and a search without the warrant. Who does the search is the I.O. This process is known as recovery and storage of exhibits. After that process, the I.O. reports what we call the investigating officer's statement. During that process, the I.O comes alongside different different people whom he or she interacts with. These are known as other witnesses. So we shall also record what we call statements of other witnesses. Then we shall go back with the evidence recovered from the search. We we'll hand it over to the investigate to the to the no no I talked about that person. Which store is that? The exhibit manager. Okay. Then the exhibit manager will record the exhibit and give us the exhibit. See. Then for us, we shall presume that the file is complete. 
we shall presume that the file is complete. Where the file is complete, never one of the rights of the suspect is known to be detained for more than 48 hours. So we don't want to violate that rule. We shall go for what we call institutional criminal proceedings. Then ask yourself, how do we institute criminal proceedings? And they are instituted by who? Okay. The how we have two modes of instituting criminal proceedings is by laying a charge. So that takes us to what we call a charge sheet. So ask yourself, do you know how to draft a charge sheet? Look at section 88 of the MCA. Okay. It tells you rules governing framing of charges. So when you're drafting a charge sheet, just not is a police form 53. It has Uganda police, police form 53, CRB number, then come and include charge sheet. Okay? Then include particulars and then statement of the offense, then date and officer preparing the charge. So the presumption is, again, on that very point, when you're drafting a charge sheet, we have what we call joint now counts and join the offenders. You know, under what circumstances we can join offenders and where we can join counts, where they do not call recipe style. Okay, the same series of transactions. Where these guys have committed offenses together, you look at section 19 of the penal code, parties. Okay, we have what we call principal offenders, aiders, and abettors. You can put them under the same charge sheet. So that means we have instituted a criminal proceedings by the first mode. Then the second mode is by way of a complaint. Okay, this is done by a private person. Okay, you read the case of Kakande versus Basad Javara, which is the locus case for criminal proceedings by a private person. Kakande versus Basad Javara. So now we have instituted our, then if after instituting, we shall go for what we call pre trial disclosure. Okay, so after instituting, this person changes from a suspect to an accused person. Then at that point, ask yourself, what are the rights of an accused person? One, now those you got under Article 28, okay, a right to bail. Then look at to bail under the magistrate's courts. Look at section 75, 77. Okay. Under what circumstances can court grant bail in the high court? The grounds are one, you have a fixed place of abode. Then two, substantial sureties. Then three, you are not likely to interfere with evidence. Then four, you will not go to uh, it's called jurisdictions. You have a fixed place of about ETC, ETC, first time offender, sole breadwinner, whatever the case may be. Okay. At that point, expect they can tell you to make that application orally. Then you oppose it and make a ruling. Simple as that. It is possible in orals. When those are your three questions. Then, after we presume that this person has been granted bail or bail has been denied. Because it is discretionary. Then we should, the, and the presumption is disclosure has been done. We are ready to go for trial. Then we go for what we call opening of the prosecution's case. How do we open this case? It is done by examination. Then we will look at before you go for examination, we go for plea, go for plea taking. Ask yourself, what are the different types of plea? We have a plea of Guilty. What is the effect of a plea of guilty? The accused is convicted on his own plea and he loses a right to appeal against a conviction. But you can appeal only against a sentence and the procedure of recording the plea. Okay. Then another plea, we have a plea of not guilty. What is the effect and procedure? Okay of where a person takes a plea of not guilty. Then we shall go what we call opening of the prosecution's case. This starts with what we call leading of evidence. That takes us what we call examination. Examination is divided into three. We have examination in chief.
then cross examination, and then re examination. So that means you should be able to appreciate how the exam is achieved. What type of questions that are asked in that type of examination? Same applies to cross and then re. Then after that, we shall go for what we call a ruling or no case to answer. The presumption is you can be a judicial officer, you know how to make the ruling. So the presumption is ask yourself, the ruling can be in affirmative or the opposite. It can be a ruling where court proves that the prosecution has failed to prove a prima facie case against that leads to an acquittal. Okay, then it also the other way. What happens here? Court rules that the accused has a case to answer. Then that takes us to what we call opening of the defense case. That is also done by leading of evidence and everything. Okay, then after, okay, then also giving those options they always give you people. Okay, your one of your last ideas. The defense has said, I am not defending myself. Okay, so what will court do? Court can proceed and enter judgments. Okay, then ask yourself, do you know how to make a judgment? Okay, do you know how to make a judgment? Okay, then after a judgment, ask yourself what are the contents of the judgment. We have the heading, okay, we have the background, we have evaluation of evidence, we have analysis reasoning and then okay this is criminal counsel we don't have orders we have a conviction with judgment over your sentence counsel okay we have a conviction because once they convict you the matter is adjourned for conviction okay we convict but we adjourned for sentence they don't sentence you the same day Okay, we say the judgment has a heading. Okay, it has a category of judgment, then it has a background. Okay, then it has evaluation of evidence. Yes, the background. Okay, it has background, evaluation of evidence, then analysis, stroke, reasoning. Others call it ratio. It is dangerous. Okay, then lastly, we get. Conviction, then it is dated and signed, then a right of appeal explained there under at times. Okay, you know, it's not, not no, we sign. I'm just saying that the judgment, eh? yes, okay. Then after that, sometimes a matter is adjourned. Once it is adjourned, you come back for another day for sentencing. So ask yourself, what is the date of the prosecution and defense in sentencing? That takes us to what we call a locutus. Okay. So do you know the factors we use in a locutus? Okay, because you can take the first proceed with a locutus. Okay. Okay, it's like this. Okay. Now, the accused himself does what we call a locutus. Court asks you, do you have anything to say about? This before, then you start. Then your counsel will proceed with what we call mitigation. Okay, yeah, I'm just giving what is done by each part. Then the prosecution does what we call abbreviation. So we know how we make that prayer. Then after that, our accused person has now turned into a convict. Then remember at that point. A right to appeal has been explained. So that means if you prefer an appeal, you'll become the appealant. Those are the five words that are used at the start. Any questions? But the difference is, okay? Mm. Yes. Okay. I love to stand by the 
accused. Aba ku se convict. No, ye yo ke ya ko si na yo that's what you call mitigation. Then, then the prosecution abbreviated. Okay, abbreviated meaning. I there is no anything like a look that that is an argument you need to find that in those that does yes cancel cancel no cancel 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 that yes it helps in what we call negotiations this are the best on our doctors, this are the best on mitigating. Okay? Now, members, listen. The procedure we've seen is of a trial in the magistrate court. We have trial in the... Let's start where the plea has been taken and the plea of non-guilds. Okay? So, but okay, before plea is taken, where the matter is filed by the high court and a... A matter has been instituted. You only appear in the magistrate's court for commission. Ask yourself, what is the duty of the magistrate and then the state? Because at that point, defense counsel, you are useless. Okay? So what happens once you get there, the presumption is state has informed the court that investigations are done and then the commission documents are on record we are ready for committal then how what will happen you the, the, the magistrate what will you do you will inform this person that you are before this court for committal you are hereby committed to the high court for trial your bail is either cancelled or depending if this person has got had gotten bail in so we presume that this person did not get bail in the magistrate court and this person has been committed to the high court. Yes? Okay, that's what I said we presume. Okay, so under such circumstances, this person has been committed is in the high court. Then after taking plea, we know the plea we are interested in. Okay, we are interested in. Okay. Uh -huh. Then at that point, you have a right to make an application for bail. Then that takes us to bail in the high court. Look at section 14 and 15 of the TIA. Give the circumstances under which bail can be granted in the high court. We base this kind of what we call exceptional circumstances. Exceptional circumstances are TV. Okay? Let's on. The magistrate scored the I got the first step of the statute. Yeah. Okay. Are we together? Well, I'm saying exceptional circumstances are three. One, grave illness. Then two, advanced head stroke. Spansy. Okay. Then we have a certificate of no objection. Add that on powers of the DPP. To issue a certificate of no objection. Yes. Look at the case of uh, Mohammed Segirinya and another versus Uganda. That application. That's powers of issue. Yes. Okay. So now we presume that you have made your application and the court has granted you bail, whatever the case may be, because it is discretionary. And that is the point. Know how to add up your words to make the application for bail or pause and make a ruling. I assure you, you can't survive those two. Okay? Various things are simple. Okay? So then, after that, the matter we shall talk what we call trial. But the trial in the high court starts with what we call organizing a criminal session. It's not automatic, but in the magistrate's court. Then that takes us to what we call organizing a criminal session by the registrar. What is the first step? Perusal of 
the records. That is the files. You ascertain the different dates. Then after that, okay, making a cause list. Okay. Then after the cause list, don't forget requisition of funds. A single no source instead of seeing requisition of funds. Then next will be contacting what we call stakeholders. At that point, ask yourself who are the different stakeholders. One, we have we have prisons, we have the DPP, we have castle on state grief. Why? All matters in high court, all accused persons should be on state grief on expense of that's what we call a right of fair hearing, a right to legal representation is mandatory in all capital offenses. Then who else? We have what we call assessors. Ask yourself who is an assessor and who qualifies to be an assessor. Capital. But God took the initiative. Yes. Once you don't take the initiative, the ground will appear. Okay? You get it? Okay? So then, we, are, we, are, we act assessors. The presumption is, you know how we get assessors and everything. So that means we have contacted all our stakeholders and you have the funds. Then we go for what we call the criminal session. Okay? So let's assume we are in the criminal session perfectly well. That takes us to what we call actual trial. Okay? Actual trial. We know what happens in the trial. We can't repeat it. After the trial has ended, we go for what we call summing up of assessors. How do we sum up assessors? So the duty of the judicial officer to notify the assessors on their duties. Okay? The essence of their opinion. Is it binding or it's not binding? What factors should they put into consideration? The, what we call, you educate them on the principles of criminal law basically. Okay? The burden and the standard, the effect of the, the category of evidence given, was it single identifying evidence, elements of the offense, and then the effect of contradictions during cross-examination. The presumption is the assessors have been summed up very well. They have given their opinion. Then the judge will proceed and give judgment and conviction, and then later sentencing. Then ask yourself, what are the different types of sentences? Custodial sentence, then fine, compensation, caution, and then sentence not there. Okay? Uh huh. That, that is custodial. For then community service. Okay? Then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sawa Allah wa pere birunji binji, abangu izo ulamu, atava we umkisoku ite ulisi, first time, first attempt. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm going to be communicating the time we are going to deal with tomorrow. But uh, I was anticipating that, uh, yes, that uh, we meet after Juma. Okay? If we meet after Juma, we go up to six. Okay? Okay? okay. Ah. Oh.